the baby-faced assassin nailed a stone-cold buzzer-beating dagger, the eighth game winner of his legendary career on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, keeping the Warriors firmly in the number two seed in the wild, wild west. Two-way combo guard Jordan Poole was a game high plus 18, as he and Wiggins had some clutch buckets down the stretch. While the Dubs' record without Draymond Green only improved to 5-7, Steph proved why he's towards the top of the NBA in fourth quarter scoring. Solid performances from Otto Porter Jr. and Kevon Looney saved the day without Dre and Clay as well. This video breaks down how the Golden State Warriors executed when it mattered most, and stick around to see how this team can continue to survive without the reigning DPOI for at least another week plus. Right quick, only 11.7% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes just a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for both those platforms. Stephen Curry has torched the Rockets in the playoffs over the last half decade and on Friday night, fans in Houston got a bone chilling reminder of how the chefs roasted their team in the recent past. However, for the second consecutive outing, Golden State played a below average ball club on their home floor and generally struggled on both ends throughout the entirety of the game. Against the Indiana Pacers on Thursday, it was the Oakland-bred Juan Toscano Anderson who took it to the rim with the game on the line and blew a fairly makeable layup and one that he typically converts. That miss from JTA sent the game into an overtime where no one could find a rhythm for Golden State. The Warriors let Kiefer Sykes and the scrappy Pacers get what they wanted in the clutch and took a brutal L to a bottom-feeding Indiana squad. Conversely, the very next night versus the Houston Rockets on Friday, in the clutch at least, which to be fair are the most crucial times, Steve Kerr and the Warriors seem to have learned their lesson, placing the rock in the palms of the greatest shooter in NBA history and one of the clutchest players of this generation in Wardell Stephen Curry II. More on Curry's fourth quarter proficiency in 2021-22 and how the chef toasted his matchup with an iconic dagger at the horn against H-Town is on its way. But it was a tumultuous opening 24 minutes for the Dubs, who trailed by six points after one frame and as many as 11 going into the locker room at halftime. Ever since Draymond went down, the defense has been extremely lackluster as the string this team plays on with the DPOY on the floor just isn't present in the slightest bit without him. I made the same comparison with Chicago not having Caruso a couple days ago, now they're not going to have him again because of the dirty Grayson Allen, but the bald Mamba's impact on the Bulls is very similar to the impact that Draymond has on his respective defense. In 240 minutes with Green on the floor, Golden State has a 101.9 defensive rating, which would rank them far ahead as the best team on that end of the floor, nearly plus three points ahead of any other squad. But in 242 minutes, equating to 12 games, without Dre, the Dubs defensive rating plummets to 107.8, which would rank them directly behind the Miami Heat, to rank as the number ninth best defensive unit. Even without Green, that's not the worst rating, which is why at the end of this video, the reason for how I think Golden State has to survive without Draymond doesn't specifically have to do with their defense, but of course their rotations and communications need to be much swifter in their upcoming matchups. Because in their last game, Houston's usually dreadful attack had zero issues carving through the Warriors' weakened defensive line all night long. On the other end, the ball was stagnant, there were limited cuts and screens with players opting to hold the ball for 10 seconds then dribble aimlessly before inviting a teammate to do the same. There were a ton of misses, Steph couldn't get anything going and no one seemed interested in helping him. However, the dubs found their flow in quarter number 3 with Kavon Looney and Gary Payton II leading a defensive charge and the Warriors looked more engaged. After shooting 1 for 10 in the first half, Curry ended up finishing with 22 points and 12 assists. Jordan Poole had 20 points on 7 for 15 shooting, and Automatic Porter Jr. chipped in a crucial 13 points on 5 for 8. The dubs tied it entering the fourth, and from there, the teams went back and forth trading run for run. At one point, with just under 5 minutes remaining, Houston had a 6 point possession on a 4 point play that included a flagrant foul, allowing Houston to maintain possession for another score. That pushed H-Town's lead to 9, but the Warriors fought back, finally tying the game on a pair of Porter Jr. free throws with 122 left. Both teams went scoreless for the next 121, and then Steph happened. Kobe Bryant had a total of 26 game winners in his storied 20-year career. Before that, his heiress Michael Jordan had a total of 25. 
while Steph's dagger against Houston was only Curry's eighth career game winner and first career game winning buzzer beater throughout his ongoing 13 year career, there's no denying the ice in Curry's veins when the pressure reaches its peak. For the last decade, he's more than shown up, but performed exceptionally well in the closing frame, and the numbers back up that sentiment. Curry is currently sixth in the NBA in fourth quarter scoring, having dropped a total of 234 points, only trailing Trey Young, LeBron James, Jason Tatum, DeMar DeRozan, and Giannis Odetokounmpo. Among those aforementioned players, Steph ranks third in three-point percentage, trailing just Buddy Heald and DeMar DeRozan. In the closing frame, Curry's also shooting a very solid 43.5% from the field, but you have to take into account that he's tasked with the second most amount of responsibility down the stretch of any player. In the fourth quarter on average, Steph's attempting 5.8 field goals, which is 0.3 behind LeBron James for the highest volume of shots taken. But taking into account Curry's production throughout the entirety of games, and it really hasn't been the smoothest season for the two-time league MVP. We're all still patiently awaiting Curry to regain his early season vintage form. He's averaging 26.3 points, 5.3 rebounds, and 6.3 assists, stellar averages. However, his scoring efficiency is seeing an unprecedented nosedive. The shooting splits are at an untypical 42, 38, and 91 on 58.9% true shooting. Not including his wrist injury shortened 2019-20 season, the last season in which Curry shot below 60% true shooting was nearly a decade ago in 2012-13. Also, he's only shooting 48.2% on twos, which would be the third worst two-point shooting mark of his career and the first time he's shot under 50% on twos since the 2010-11 campaign. Of course, that isn't a great sign, given Curry's also going through a rough stretch from deep range. The chef's shooting inconsistencies have fed into his bouts of passivity, while being passive has led to a lack of consistent rhythm and flow, a crippling feedback loop serving as the culprit behind his mid-season slump. So, with the current struggles from Steph, and maybe more notably right now, the team's most valuable passer, defender, and screen setter in Draymond Green being out, how does Golden State start performing like the top-seeded team they are? While the Warriors are historically great defensively with Draymond Green, without the all-time stopper, Golden State, as I mentioned before, is still the number 9 ranked team out of 30 behind the stable Miami Heat in defensive rating. It's actually Golden State's offense that's drastically fallen off minus Green, as it ranks at a league third best 112.7 with him, and shockingly down at a league 25th best 107.1 without Draymond. That means the key to making up for Green's absence is doing everything you can to build up a similarly lethal offensive rhythm to when the three-time All-Star and two-time All-NBA player is on the court, meaning Andrew Wiggins and or Jordan Poole need to really start performing like All-Star caliber shot creators consistently. Also, you need Stephen Curry to both pick his spots more effectively and generally make higher IQ decisions. The Warriors point guard can win scoring titles for days, but when Steph's playing like he's trying to drop 30 every night to stay on track with the likes of Durant, among others, that can throw off the Warriors' pace and flow sometimes. Steph's always been a talented passer, but his lack of true facilitating instincts has been made more clear in this recent stretch without Draymond. However, Steph's an excellent screen setter, defender, and like I said, has some passing ability, so if Curry makes it a point of emphasis to get his teammates going more often, that could very well be the key to Golden State surviving without Draymond. Of course, they still miss Green's defense on the back end badly, but without Curry competing for back-to-back -back scoring titles, and instead strictly looking to set up Looney, Poole, or Wiggins while mixing in some threes here and there, that strategy should allow the dubs to outscore their opponents by a good amount. Steph committing to resembling more of a John Stockton as opposed to his typical legendary three-point shooting self, that's the key to the Warriors making up for Draymond's absence. But what's the key to the Warriors surviving without Draymond Green in your opinion? Best answer in the comments earns next video shout out. Top five commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Irvin Alexar Guerra, who says my favorite Suns player right now is of course Devin Booker. 
Not only is he scoring at elite levels, such as his 50 piece versus the Spurs, but also, as you said, his defense and tough mentality is underrated and his playmaking is improving, especially with point guard Chris Paul as his teammate. Pause to read the rest of that take from Irvin. This was D-Flow. I hope you have a great one and I'll see you next video.